Hi friends, Sally the Seeker here. I hope you all are doing well. I'm going backwards with Darrell, going back to the beginning, because this is when he still has his two defense attorneys with him, whom he foolishly dismissed. But this is him coming forth with the attorneys and their motion to withdraw. And he's going through some questions with Judge Darrow. I had recorded this before, but the quality was really bad. This one is a little bit better. The only problem with is the sound does not seem very loud. So I have it up as loud as loudly as I can. And you may need to use like earbuds or headset, whatever. Um, but hopefully, hello, Paris. My kitty's saying hello to me. Hello, baby. Hello. Anyhow, so we're going to go ahead because it's just like amazing. If you just look at him, his arrogance and his ridiculous questions and just his whole behavior. I just thought it would be interesting for us to go back because as we go back forward, you know, he's going to, as he's been doing, as he did the whole trial, talk about how this is unfair, that's unfair. But I will give Judge Dora credit. Like I said, there's things I didn't agree with what she did, but she was extremely thorough in explaining to him how this was all going to be if he decided to defend himself, even though he does try to, well, he doesn't try. He succeeds in being an idiot, and but his arrogance just floors me, just right from the get-go. This was, um, I think, around September 27th of 2022, so right before the trial begins. So let's just listen to some of it. Today, just to go over what I would call some scheduling, housekeeping matters um, related to this case and uh, the motion before the court. I don't believe I need to put any of the substance of that on the record and the, unless there is a request from either of the parties. Um, I do not intend to go over any of the substantive issues that are remaining in this case other than the motion to withdraw um, that includes the various filings that the parties have made and any other open issues that we have at this time. I need to first address the issue with Mr. Brooks and the motion to withdraw. I do want to start out with you, Mr. Brooks, and ask you is it your desire to represent yourself in this case? It is. Uh, I would like to proceed in this matter uh, prior to signing. Not per se. Say that last part again. I would like to proceed in this matter in pro per, not pro se. So you're going to have to tell me what you think that means. Um, it is me exercising my right to defend myself, to represent myself as a sovereign citizen. So in, essentially this matter today would be me appearing by special appearance. You have an absolute right to have an attorney represent you. It is protected not only by the Wisconsin Constitution, but the United States Constitution. Do you understand that? Um, I do understand my rights under the United States Constitution. Did you hear what I said? Uh, repeat it. Do you understand that you have the right to have an attorney represent you, what we call the right to counsel? Under the Sixth Amendment, correct? Under the Sixth Amendment, the Fourteenth Amendment, and the Wisconsin Constitution as well. It's a well-established right that a criminal defendant has. Do you understand that? I'm aware, yes. Do you also understand that you have the right to represent yourself? I'm aware of 
aware of that as well. I have before me a motion to withdraw by your attorneys with the sole basis that is listed that you want to represent yourself. Is that your understanding as well? Uh, that isn't entirely how the, the issue came about. Uh, I think it's important for that to be on record. Um, I'm not asking you to divulge attorney-client privileged information. Do you understand that? So essentially, what is the question? Well, I want to make sure you understand you have these competing rights. It is recognized in uh, our case law from the United States Constitution, uh, United States Supreme Court, the Wisconsin Supreme Court, that there are these competing rights: the right to counsel and the right to self-representation, essentially to be your own counsel. Do you understand these competing rights? You understand, sir, that you can't have an attorney and exercise that right and also exercise the right of self-representation. Uh, I don't understand that. So you started off this hearing by saying you want to exercise uh, this right to appear in persona today and act as a sovereign citizen. Sir, my concern here today is there's a request from your attorneys to withdraw from this case. Do you understand that's the request before me today? I'm aware that they filed a motion to withdraw, yes. And are you aware, let me back up, have you seen that motion, sir, the written motion? I have seen it. Did they give you a copy, the paper copy? I believe it was delivered to me in the jail. Do you have that in front of you today? No, I do not. Then quick, why don't you print off a copy and we'll give it to him. Just that. His lawyers are prepared. Of course, he's not going to take any Attorney Perry has put paperwork that in front of Mr. Brooks, along with the court is providing another copy. Mr. Brooks, can you acknowledge for me that you have a written copy of the motion to withdraw now in front of you? Yeah, this, this is a motion to withdraw. Are you able to read that on your own, sir? Yes. Have you read it? Of course not. Now that we know what we know, none of this is surprising to us. As of now, I have read. Do you understand what's in that motion? Yes, I'm aware of what's in that motion, yes. Is there anything about that motion you do not understand? I'm aware. I'm aware. My question is, do you understand? I'm aware. Do you understand what it says, sir? To me right there. All right. So let me start off again by asking you Do you wish to represent yourself in this case? Yes, I do. Before, I'm sorry, I'm sorry go ahead. I would like to represent myself pro per. What does that mean to you, sir? Explain to me again, that request. Again, because I've already said it on record to represent myself as a sovereign citizen. I'm not going to make a determination, sir, whether you're a sovereign citizen or not. It's not relevant to my determination how you characterize who you are 
other than you are accused of 77 counts, which I will go through momentarily, and you have the right to have an attorney represent you. That's your constitutional right. You have two very capable attorneys that have been with you from the beginning. You understand that, right? No, I do not understand that. What don't you understand about that, sir? I don't understand why it's a reference being made to the, the capableness of my attorneys. Now, I, I agree that they have worked tirelessly on a lot of the things in this case. And I credit them with that. I'm appreciative of that. But it also should be said that there's a lot of things that I did not understand about the proceedings in a lot of the court cases. There were things that I didn't understand why there wasn't certain motions filed. There were a lot of things that I did not understand the totality of the meaning behind. And that is what kind of led to a lot of issues. But these were issues that were being raised for a number of months. This was not just something that sprung up out of the blue. And I feel that as my attorneys, that it would be essentially their job to make me aware of things that I do not understand. So that's where a lot of the questions come into question, actually. Yeah, I bet you they were ridiculous questions that they had no way of answering, or they answered them for him, but not to his liking. Those of us who have hung in here with Durrell know that's how he works. So, and I can't even imagine how those two attorneys dealt with him all the time that they did. Be interesting to see if either of them spoke out about how it was to work with him after this was all said and done. But I will continue. So let me follow that up, sir. If I allow them to withdraw, you lose their legal experience, their specialized training, right? their education, their work as attorneys. You understand that? No, I do not understand. So if you are allowed to represent yourself in this case, sir, you will not have attorneys assisting you. If I let them withdraw, they are gone from this case. Do you understand that? I think I will probably be better served representing myself. So in order for me to evaluate hmm. whether that's appropriate in this case, there are certain things that I need to go through with you and on the record. Okay? Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. So let's start with the charges in this case. And I'm going to group them together, and if you have any questions, you need to ask me. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. So first of all, sir, you are charged with six counts of first-degree intentional homicide, use of a dangerous weapon. Do you understand that? No, I do not. And what I don't understand is the, the nature and cause of the charge. Oh, God. Have you been provided with a copy of the second amended criminal complaint, sir? I do not say that. I have a copy for you. It was filed on January 12 of 2022. I'll have my clerk hand it to the bailiff. We'll be Just real quick. I Look, the attorney's probably saying, yes, you have been provided. You know they provided him with everything. He's, he. I mean, he starts from the get-go, all of his games, time wasters, 
things to hold things up, even though he denies it. But we all know. He's just, and I just, the smug look off his, on his face, I just kind of want to wipe the smug off his face. You know what I mean? You just, ugh. Provided with it. While we're giving that to you, Attorney Terry, have you provided Mr. Brooks with a copy of that previously? I believe so. I think he was also provided a copy of that in court. I'm sure they have. I would have. like to say, though, um, since you said January. That was filed on January 12th, 2022. Um, part of the... So, sir, let me focus you back. I'm interrupting here for a second because mm -hmm. I want to focus on this document. So, this particular document was filed on January 12th of 2022. Take a look at it. This document details the factual basis the state is relying upon to support each and every one of the charges. Do you generally understand what a criminal complaint is, sir? No, I did not. Well, it's in front of you. Are you able to read it? No, I don't mean this moment, but do you read, write, and understand English? Yes. All right. Uh, remind me again the, uh, of the last grade you completed. I have uh, HSED. And how many years in school did you actually attend before obtaining your HSED? How long after you uh, went to school through 11th grade did you obtain your HSED? While you were in school, did you have any special education classes? Minimum. Any of those deal with reading or reading comprehension? No, ma'am. Do you believe you have any issues with reading documents in this case from a comprehension standpoint? Absolutely not. Do you know at what grade level you read? Do you believe it's a high school educational level, a college level? I don't know. Um, uh, I wouldn't be able to guess that off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure that it's adequate. Any physical or psychological disability that would affect your ability to understand the paperwork that's given to you in this case? No, not paperwork wise, no. Any physical or psychological disability that you believe would affect your ability to communicate in the courtroom, whether to me or in front of a jury? Absolutely not. I'm doing a good job now. You are answering my questions and I am. Look at that. Good gosh. His arrogance. But the other attorney is about to, like, choke. Detective Casey over there, sitting behind Zach, is like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, he's, he's so confident, isn't he? I appreciate that. <laughs> I wonder what that so, attorney is thinking beside you him. You understand, sir, that... You are charged with 77 different counts as it relates to conduct of yours that is alleged to have occurred on November 21 of 2021 in the city of Waukesha. No, I do not understand, and I say that because I'm still trying to. I would like to know the nature of the cause of the charges. So listen to me and listen to what I'm asking you. Do you understand that you're facing 77 charges as no, it relates? Hold on, that. let me get my question out. Already, here he goes. So, and I will start a little bit more basically. Do you understand that you are charged with a variety of offenses due to conduct that you are alleged to have done stemming from an incident for a series of incidents from November 21 of 2021 in the city of Waukesha. No, I do not understand. 
you understand you're facing criminal charges, sir, in Waukesha County? No, I did not. Lies. So you have no idea that you are facing 77 different charges? No, I did not. So not true. Ugh. This is just the beginning. Can you imagine what they all had to go through? Mm -mm -mm. Right there. Wouldn't you love to know what Attorney Basie is whispering to <laughs> Attorney Opper? You're probably like, hold on, we're in for a long ass ride. And then look at Durrell with his smug face. All right, let's see what else they have to say. I would like that explained to me. But you would. Have you asked your attorneys to explain that to you? I believe I have a number of times. I'm going to do this a little bit differently, sir. Okay. You are charged with six counts of first degree intentional homicide with an enhancer for the use of a dangerous weapon. The charges of first degree intentional homicide, use of a dangerous weapon, carries a penalty of lifetime imprisonment. That means the information in this case alleges that you caused the death of another individual, in this case six other individuals, with intent to kill, contrary to section 940.01 sub 1 sub a of the Wisconsin statute. That's a class A felony. Again, upon conviction you shall be sentenced to life imprisonment. That's as it relates to the first six charges. Do you understand what I told you just, what I've advised you thus far regarding the penalties for the intentional homicide charges? No, I do not. You don't understand that these are punishable by life imprisonment? Oh, well, I still know the nature and cause of the charges. Uh, Sir, I'm focused on the penalties right now and the charges. Please answer my question. I do not understand. Did you hear what I just said right now? Absolutely. You are charged additionally with 61 counts of first degree reckless endangering safety, use of a dangerous weapon. These charges are class F felonies, and upon conviction, you may be fined not more than $25,000 or imprisoned not more than 12 and a half years or both. This too has an enhancer for use of a dangerous weapon, which means the maximum term of imprisonment may be increased by not more than five years. Did you hear me advise you of these penalties, sir? I heard, but I did not understand the nature of the cause that was charging. Uh, sovereign idiot. There are also an additional six counts of what is referred to in the information as hit and run resulting in death. Each one of these six counts is a class D felony. And upon conviction, you may be fined not more than $100,000 or in prison for not more than 25 years or both. Sir, did you hear me tell you about the penalties for these offenses? Yes, but I don't understand the nature of the cause of the charges. Sir, did you hear me? tell you about the penalties for these offenses just now. I don't understand the nature of the charges. 
I'm not asking you that, sir. Did you hear me advise you of the penalties for hit and run resulting in death? Did you hear me tell you about the penalties for hit and run resulting mm -hmm. in death? But did you That's not my question, hear sir, her. so stop playing games with me right now, okay? Did you hear me tell you the penalties for hit and run resulting in death? I'm not asking you if you understand. I'm asking you, did you hear me advise you about the penalty? Are you able to hear me right now? Yeah. Did you hear me advise you about the penalties for hit and run resulting in death? Again, sir, did you hear me right now? I heard you right now. Did you hear me tell you the penalties? Yes or no? Yeah. And it's, I'm not asking if you understand. So you're the one who wants to represent yourself in this case. So I need to go through all of the penalties with you. There are two counts of felony bail jumping. Each one of those counts is a class H felony, and upon conviction, you may be fined not more than $10,000 or in prison, not more than six years or both. Did you hear me tell you these penalties just now? Did you hear her? Did you hear me? <laughs> There are also two counts of misdemeanor battery domestic abuse. Each one of these offenses is a class A misdemeanor and upon conviction you may be fined not more than $10,000 or imprisoned not more than nine months or both. And because each of these charges is an act of domestic abuse, costs upon conviction would include the domestic abuse assessment imposed under Wisconsin law. Do you understand, sir, what I have just told you about the penalties for misdemeanor battery? No, I do not. Did you hear me? Yeah, I heard. Sir, I calculated the exposure for all of these offenses in two ways. In Wisconsin, when a person is convicted of a felony, under truth and sentencing, there's a maximum term of initial confinement and a maximum term of, a, of supervision that a court can order. So for example, for a lifetime offense, such as a class A felony, excuse for you, intentional homicide, my kitty Paris is objecting. Do you understand that? No. Did you hear what I said? Uh. For a class A felony for first degree intentional homicide, do you understand the maximum is life imprisonment? No, I do not understand. Did you hear me? I guess he understands it now, doesn't he? For the first degree reckless endangering safety charges, if I were to calculate all of the Excuse you. imprisonment that you face from a maximum standpoint, it would be 762 and a half years plus an additional 305 years for the enhancers for use of a dangerous weapon. You understand that? No. Did you hear me just now? Recite that bill. Yeah. For the six charges of hit and run, the maximum exposure that you face for just 
those six offenses alone is 150 years. You it looks that? so bored. So, did you hear me say that, though? For the two counts of felony bail dumping, the maximum for both offenses is 12 years imprisonment. Do you understand that? No. Did you hear me say that, though? Yes. For the two Class A misdemeanors, the maximum is 18 months, meaning nine months plus nine months. Do you understand that? No. But did you hear me say that? Mm. You heard me advise you of all of these penalties. Is that right, sir? Yes, I heard you. I understand. I heard you. Sir, do you want to be represented by a lawyer in this case? No, I do not. Do you understand that you have a constitutional right to be represented by a lawyer in this case? I'm aware that that is a right under the Constitution. Do you understand that if you do not have enough money to hire your own lawyer, you may be entitled to have a lawyer appointed to represent you? Do you understand that? I'm aware, yes. I've already gone through the charges and the maximum penalties of imprisonment for all of these offenses. If you are represented by a lawyer, he or she may discover information or facts which would be helpful in your defense. A lawyer may find that you have a defense to the charge or that there are facts which may result in a lighter penalty. I want you to take this into consideration in deciding whether or not you want a lawyer to represent you. I also need you to understand that the trial will continue under the same legal rule that, you would, that would apply if you had a lawyer. If you represent yourself, you will have to follow these rules. Because you are not trained in the law, this will make it hard for you to challenge the evidence presented by the state and hard for you to present any evidence that you want to present. If you decide to testify, you will be sworn as a witness and can give testimony while you are acting as a witness. You will be asked questions by the other side at that time. However, you cannot try to testify while acting as your own lawyer. Do you understand these things, sir? No, I don't. It doesn't sound like pro se to me. Oh, Does it sound like what? It sounds like pro se to me. Well, there are two options here. You Pro se means you act as your own attorney. You're self-represented. So when I talk about not having a lawyer, representing yourself, acting pro se, those are all the same. They all have the same meaning. Do you understand that? No, I do not. My understanding that it's not the same meaning as representing yourself as pro se. And it, hmm. that could be clarify for me, then it would greatly help. Sir, under the Constitution, you have a right to have a lawyer and you have a right to self-representation. Those are the only two rights that I am talking I'm about today. I'm aware of that. So whatever your understanding about some other hybrid fashion, not what I would be proceeding under. Do you understand that? No, I do not. What is your expectation, sir, about proceeding on your own in this case, in this pro forma, as you have said. I simply seek to represent myself pro per so that I can establish my sovereign citizenship. Ugh. But what does that mean as to whether you have an attorney or not to you? Clarify what you're saying, what you're asking. You keep repeating this phrase, pro, is it per? Spell it for me. Yes, I want to make sure that I have the right words that you're using. You want me to spell prior persona or pro per? Which one? Tell me what you think you want to do in this case and what 
phrase or term that you're using and what it means to you. Your Honor, I just stated on the record what I would like to do. I don't mean it. <sighs> Spell it for me. P-R-O-P-R-I-A-P-E-R-S-O-N-A. And what does that mean to you, sir? It means that I am representing myself as a sovereign citizen of the United States. Mm. Does that mean you have an attorney or not have an attorney representing you? To you? It means that I am representing myself in all legal matters. So that would say that I am my own attorney. Do you understand in order for me to honor that request of yours, means you must waive your right to an attorney in this case. Can you clarify that for me? Hmm. In order for me to honor this request of you to appear pro persona as a sovereign citizen, you, because what you, let me back up. What you're telling me is that you want to represent yourself and you're describing it as pro persona. Fair enough? Do I have that right? Yes, ma'am. All right. What I hear when you say that is you want to represent yourself and exercise your right under the Constitution to be your own attorney. That's what I understand your request to be. Am I wrong in my assessment of that? No, you are not. In order for me to recognize your request, and grant your request, you must waive your right to counsel in this case. Do you understand that? Is it case law on that? Can you give me clarification? I'm not, I can't oh, give you advice, sir. I'm just asking you questions, all right? Well, my understanding is, I don't see how that comes into play. I don't. That's why I'm asking, is it a way that that can be that part of what you're saying? Just that part, can you clarify to me? Because that was not my understanding that there had to be some waiver of rights. And Sir, in nature. order for you to represent yourself, you need to waive your right to counsel in this case. Do you understand that? No, I do not. Because it's not, it's not clear to me. That you can't way. have it both ways, sir. You I'm either not to have, have both ways. listen to me. Just ask. You either have an attorney and you're exercising your right to have an attorney, or you waive your right to an attorney and you act as your own attorney, what I refer to as self representation. Doesn't matter to me what phrase you put on it. The Constitution guarantees you the right to have counsel, and it guarantees you the right to represent yourself. In order for me to honor your request to represent yourself and allow that in this case, means you must exercise, you must waive your right to an attorney. Now it is. Just broke it down that way, it's a little bit more clear. That's all I was asking. I don't necessarily know, right, what's going on in your mind. That's why I ask a lot of questions. So do you now understand that, sir? Yeah, I would like to weigh that right to a counsel. I would like to represent myself from her as I stated this. Part of the decision I need to make, sir, is to evaluate certain criteria. I, that's why I asked the questions earlier in part about your level of education, your level of literacy, your ability to communicate in the courtroom, etc. Do you remember me asking you those questions? Yeah, I remember you asking me those. So another thing that I have to evaluate though, sir, because ultimately I have to make a determination that you are knowingly, intelligently, voluntarily and deliberately 
making a choice to waive your right to counsel and represent yourself. And in order for me to do that, I must establish certain things, including that you understand the charges and the penalties you face. Does that all make sense so far? You may have a lack of understanding about the nature of the charges and may have questions regarding that. But my role here today is not so much to explain all of those nuances and explain the basis for the charges, but to make sure you understand what charges you face and the penalties for them. Do you understand the distinction? Yeah, it makes sense to me. All right. So I'm going to go back to these charges again, sir. You understand you're charged with six counts of intentional homicide. Not, I'm not, and let me preface, I'm not asking you if you understand why. I'm asking you if you understand you, that these particular six charges have been filed against you. I'm aware. And are you aware of the penalties of conviction, convicted, excuse me, for each count of first degree intentional homicide? You said a lot of numbers, so. <laughs> well, and I can go back to them, and I'm okay. Yeah. This is important. So. First degree intentional homicide is a class A felony and upon conviction you shall be sentenced to imprisonment in life. Do you understand that? I'm aware. All right. Now are you aware that there's also an enhancer for use of a dangerous weapon? I don't understand that, but I'm aware. You're aware. I'm aware. <laughs> All right. Are you aware that if a jury finds that you committed the offense of first degree intentional homicide by using a dangerous weapon, that maximum term of imprisonment for this felony may be increased by not more than five years. Essentially, it adds five years for each offense convicted with that question being answered by the jury, yes. Do you understand? Are you aware of that? Don't smile. It doesn't help. And are you aware, sir, that you face 61 counts of first-degree reckless endangering safety use of a dangerous weapon? Are you aware that each one of those 61 felonies, upon conviction, you may be fined not more than $25,000 or in prison, not more than 12 and a half years or both? And are you aware that if convicted and the jury answers the question yes, about using a dangerous weapon, each of those terms of imprisonment may be increased by not more than five years. Are you aware, sir, that you are also charged with six counts of hit and run resulting in death? And are you aware that each one of those class B felonies is punishable by imprisonment up to 25 years? I hope I did. If I didn't, it's 25 years. I'm reading it right from the... I probably missed it. There's a lot of charges, and I understand that there's a lot of numbers. But are you aware that a Class B felony for hit and run resulting in death is punishable by a fine of up to $100,000 and imprisonment of up to 25 years? Are you aware that you're charged with two counts of felony bail jumping? Are you aware that each one of those counts carries a maximum term of imprisonment of not more than six years and a $10,000 fine? Are you aware that you're charged with two counts of misdemeanor battery domestic abuse? Are you aware that each one, as a Class 8 misdemeanor, uh, the maximum term of imprisonment is nine months and a $10,000 fine? Are you aware that they're each charged as acts of domestic abuse so that upon conviction, there would be a domestic abuse assessment imposed. That last part I don't understand. What exactly does that mean? The, the sure. very last sentence. Sure, it, it's, it states as follows in the charging document that 
invoking the provisions of 968.075 sub 1 sub a because this charge is an act of domestic abuse costs upon conviction would include the domestic abuse assessment imposed under Wisconsin law an additional $100 also a fine it's a cost it's a surcharge easy cost technically it's a domestic abuse assessment it's a financial obligation but the when the court imposes it, it, it has some other collateral consequences that follow with it. I can't give you advice on what that is, but typically it involves prohibition of firearms. Are you aware of that? You understand let me rephrase that are you aware sir that the state of Wisconsin is represented by District Attorney Sue Offer Deputy District Attorney Leslie Basie and Assistant District Attorney Zach Wichel the three individuals seated to your left my right are you aware that the state of Wisconsin is represented by three attorneys here in court no, I do not understand. Are you oh, aware? Gosh. I'm not even aware. So you under do you are Come you aware, on. sir, that the state of Wisconsin is the plaintiff in this case? Here we go. Um, not aware. You, you, this is where the confusion of that comes in. Oh boy. I have confusion to how the state. I am not going to give you legal advice regarding that answer, sir. But you have the second amended criminal complaint, and if you don't, we'll give you the information as well. These are called charging documents, sir. And on the top of each one of those, on page one, there's a caption. The State of Wisconsin Circuit Court, Waukesha County. Do you see that? I see that. Do you see where it says State of Wisconsin Plaintiff versus Daryl Brooks Defendant? Okay. Um, this is why I'm confused. Uh. You have a lot of every document I ever got up until this point was like this with my name in all caps. So what are you holding up? Is that the motion to withdraw? Well, yeah, because it's the the newest. Right. So every legal document that is filed that's considered a pleading would have a caption. The caption is the information that says what court we're in. So it's circuit court, the county, Waukesha County, and tells the court who the parties are. The parties in this case are the state of Wisconsin as the plaintiff and Daryl Brooks as the defendant. Are you aware of that, sir? No, I'm not. Uh, I, I need clarification on <clears throat> how the state of Wisconsin can be a plaintiff. That, that would this begins the whole plaintiff crap. That the state of Wisconsin is the injured party. How can the state be the injured party? Sir, I am not going to go down this path of giving you legal advice. Are you I'm not asking for legal advice. Right. And I don't need I'm to saying provide. I'm confused on how that can be. That's, that's what I'm talking about. The bottom line, sir, is the state of Wisconsin is the legal entity represented by the Waukesha County District Attorney's Office that brings charges against the defendant. Um, alleged defendant. Well, no, you're a defendant accused of alleged. committing offenses. You're not an alleged defendant. You are a defendant. But Tell him, Judge. The allegations are accusations. Are you aware of that? now aware of it because I just told you that. No. Well, we're going to start with this premise, sir, that the state of Wisconsin is the plaintiff. They are represented in this case by the Waukesha County District Attorney's Office. There's many attorneys in that office, but the three attorneys who are prosecuting this case are 
the district attorney, Sue Opper, one of her deputy district attorneys, Leslie Basie, and an assistant district attorney, Zach Wichow. They have been seated um, at the other table, whatever courtroom we are in throughout all of the proceedings for the vast majority of the proceedings in this case. You're aware of that, right? No. You're not aware that these attorneys, these people seated to your right have been in court virtually every time that you've appeared in court? Um, I mean, the guy just came like the last couple in court The days. guy. I, I mean, so you are aware because you made some observations. <clears throat> well, the confusion with the question that you're asking is still how can the state of Wisconsin be the plaintiff? I'm not going to answer that question, sir. Part. I have a different reason for advising you and what you need to know and what's important for my conversation with you today is that the state of Wisconsin is represented by three attorneys. Is that a judicial determination? Oh, for not. gosh sake. It's their prosecutorial discretion, sir. So, so they but what, hold on, nope. Let me ask you the questions and tell you certain things. What I want you to know is that the three attorneys appearing on this case have a collective, if I did my math right, 66 years of experience as attorneys. Did you hear what I said? Yes or no? 66 years of experience as attorneys. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask them a couple questions, and I want you to listen carefully. Attorney Opper, has your entire career been as a prosecutor? Yes, ma'am, since 1991. How many intentional homicide cases can you estimate for this court that you've been involved in? Ten. That's just before me. Is that how you took that question, or is that total? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, within the course of my career. All right. So, ten intentional homicide cases that actually went to trial or just prosecuted in general. I wasn't very clear on my question. So, uh, I, I would say probably eight of those would have gone to trial. Um, just as a ballpark, sir. Right. Suffice it to say, you are experienced in litigating. Potential homicide. <coughs> Excuse me. You're also experienced in litigating reckless endangering safety charges. Yes, ma'am, I've had many cases like that over my career. How many trials do you think you've participated in over your 31 years? I would estimate 200. Pretty basic, similar questions. Have <coughs> Excuse me. That as a prosecutor, can you estimate for the court how many trials you have been involved in? Very precise. Any of those intentional homicides? Any of those involved recklessly endangering safety charges? Look at him. He looks. So bored and unimpressed, and he really should be, because, well, again, it's a case of him believing, truly believing, he's the smartest guy in the room. What a joke. And then later on, we get to hear all his whining and belly aching about how this isn't fair. It's not fair. The prosecution gets, gets to do it. Why can't I? Would I have the same privileges that they have? Well, hell no, you wouldn't. Besides the point. Here we go. Now, Attorney Wichow, you're what we call the baby of the bunch. 
my understanding is eight years of experience. Baby did yeah. damn good, though, didn't he? All of that as a prosecutor. Yep. Have you been involved in an intentional homicide trial before? No. In addition, Mr. Brooks, first of all, did you hear the answers to the questions I just asked these attorneys? Yeah, I heard. You understand, sir, they have a lot of experience sitting at that table. Would that be fair to say? You also understand, though, that they have at their disposal an investigator with the Waukesha County Sheriff's Department. I mean, they're assigned, that person's assigned to the district attorney's office to help them, even during a trial. I don't understand where we're going with this. I just want you to understand <clears throat> the resources unbelievable. that you're up against when you represent yourself. It doesn't make me flinch one day. And I'm not asking you whether you flinch, I'm asking you if you understand it. I don't, I still go back to the question I asked. I don't understand how they can represent against your party. How can the state of Wisconsin, corporate state of Wisconsin, well, against your party? I'm not answering that question. Okay, this is so a. Is that a judicial determination that you're Oh, gosh. Sir, <clears throat> this is a legitimate case. And I'm not going to make a mockery by you asking that question. Tell him, Judge. This case has been proceeding since what, November 23 of last year, and it's going to keep going on whether you understand how the state can be a party or not. Do I make myself clear? No, because the question is still there. Still I'm telling you, I'm not answering the question. Whether you understand the issue or not is not going to stop this case from going forward. So is that a rest of judgment? No. Oh, so, God. I also want you to be aware that the district attorney's office has available, because the case involves witnesses from the city of Waukesha Police Department, that they will have seated at the table behind them, currently seated now, Detective Tom Casey. Are you aware of that? I'm still going to refer back to the question. Sir, answer my question. Did, first of all, did you hear me ask the question? Did you hear me? Yes or no? No. So, I'm telling you, Detective Casey is going to be their court officer throughout this case. Did you hear me say that? Oh. Oh my In gosh. addition to Detective Casey being here, the district attorney's office also has a support staff member that will be available for their use during this trial. Did you hear me say that? Still not understanding how oh my gosh. not being answered. Sir, did you hear me tell you that right now? Did the court hear me ask the question of Mr. how Brooks. the state be a plaintiff? I don't care what you ask the court. I'm not, I'm not allowed to give you legal advice, nor will I. I'm not asking for legal advice. The whole point of this, sir, is that I need you to be aware that many people are going to sit on the other side of the courtroom working towards presenting this case and seeking convictions on all charges. Now seated next to you are attorneys Perry and attorneys and attorney Keith. My understanding of their experience, sir, is that attorney Perry has been practicing for 20 years. Attorney Perry, is that true? Yes. All of that with the public defender's office. Yes, sir. You have experience both now in the trial courts and the appellate courts, is that true? Yes. And throughout that experience, you have litigated intentional homicide cases. Yes. Also been involved in, I would imagine, cases where the charges involve recklessly endangering safety. Hit and run, resulting in death. Yeah. 
attorney keys, my understanding is you have 12 years of experience. Yes. All with the public defender's office? In criminal defense. All in criminal defense. Um, and you've been involved in intentional homicide cases as well. Yes. Again, look at Darrell. He just looks so bored. He's not really listening to any of this. At the end of the day, it's just all about him hearing his own damn self. Because he truly believes he's superior to everybody in there. Thank goodness we know how this all turns out. Or I would have lost my mind. Suffice it to say, you and Attorney Perry have dedicated your careers to representing the rights of people accused of crime. Yes. Take that job very seriously. I do. Attorney Perry, same thing, right? Yes. Mr. Brooks, did you hear me ask your attorneys about their experience as attorneys? Oh. 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 Just say yes, for gosh sake. Sir, did you hear me ask them about their experience? Sir, did you hear me ask them questions about their experience as attorneys? Yes or no? Since you're questioning the relevance look at sue I opper she's like me let me at him you are seated next to attorneys who have dedicated their careers to the representation of individuals accused of crimes and that they're very experienced at that so there's so something that i did not say The other thing that I need to make sure you are aware of, sir, is what the state would have to prove in this case in terms of the elements of the offenses. I presume, but I want you to confirm that you understand the state of Wisconsin bears the burden of proof in a criminal case. I'm not going to confirm anything until uh, the question is answered how the state needs can I answer that question, sir? Can it be, can it be shown to me by some type of case law? You currently something? have attorneys representing you. I have not discharged them. If you have questions about legal topics, you can ask them. I'll even give you a moment. I'll step off. I'll give you a couple minutes, five, whatever. If you need to ask them those questions, you want that opportunity. Prosecution. Sir, I'm not going. We're moving no. on. I understand you're not happy with the court not answering this question that you have, but I'm not going to answer it. Well, that's essentially a rest of judgment. Oh, I'm not Lord. To any judgment, sir. My concern here is to make sure that you understand the charges you face the penalties are, that are associated with them, that you're aware of all of these things, that you are aware that you as a defendant do not have to prove anything at a trial. Are you aware of that? Uh, I can't move past the rest of the judgment. Oh, and there's gosh. no rest of judgment. And did assume, you hear me, sir? You just assume His attorneys look like they're about to lose just their just damn minds. We're moving on, sir. Mr. How Brooks, can we do that, though? This is we are here at your request to represent yourself. We're going to move on because your question is not relevant to that inquiry. So I'm moving on. But it's relevant. And you don't have to like it. No, it's not. It's not that I don't. It's, We're moving I'm on. Fine. It's just you are not fine. I find it, I find it hard to for 
me to ask a question that's not relevant, but then it's relevant for me to know the, the Mr. experience. Mr. Brooks, we're moving on, and if you have the inability to move on, then this hearing is done. It still has to be a determination made. Sir? Mm. I would like no. to continue, so we need to move past this. And if you can't move past this, then I'm done. Then I can still make the record. Sir, do you understand that the state of Wisconsin must prove each and every offense beyond a reasonable doubt? No, I do not understand until my question is answered. Sir, are you aware that no, I am the not state... Aware. I didn't uh, ask the question. Good How can you answer? Mr. Brooks, are you aware that the state must prove every element of each offense charge beyond a reasonable doubt in order for you to be convicted? Um, no, I'm not aware. The state still has, I'm still confused. How are they? Right, attorney, attorney, please. I'm, we're going to go off the record. I'm going to take a break. I'll mute the live stream. Um, actually, I'll even stop it for now. Um, I'm going to clear the courtroom. I'm going to give you some time to talk with Mr. Brooks. I'm not answering his question, nor am I required to answer his question, but I can't move past this if he is going to keep interrupting. He's not demonstrated thus far that he understands enough for me to even get past that to make a determination that he can waive his right to counsel. I trust And right there, it buffers, and the the Zoom session seems to have finished. But this is a stay tuned because there will be a part two. Because I guess she does leave. I guess they leave and have Attorney Perry, to the best of his ability, explain Brooks' ridiculous questions give answers to them but it really doesn't matter because we all see how he behaved through the whole damn trial and I just thought it was interesting to go back and see how this all came about and then here he is the rush to judgment going on about the plaintiff and the, the pro per and all this ridiculousness, but it just goes to show that um, he pushed all of this all the way through the end, even after the jury had made their decision. But it's good entertainment for us, and I don't know about you all, but I take great pleasure now in knowing that when we didn't know that he did get his a thousand plus years in prison. Thank God. But I can't, I bet you those, his defense attorneys, even though I thought they presented themselves very professionally and he was a damn fool to let them go. But you know, he knew better. He felt like he, he felt like he knew better. So let him have at it. But there will be a part two. And we get to see the two defense attorneys pack up and leave. And then there's Brooks all by himself thinking he's ready to conquer the world. And he really conquers nothing. So I hope you all enjoyed this. I really liked going back to see this because he just, his attitude never changed at all. Never, ever. So part two will be soon. Thank you all so much for watching, commenting, subscribing, and for just your overall support. You are like the, the greatest group of folks I have come and counter with in a long time. And it's hard to find on YouTube. But y'all are awesome, and I appreciate you all. So, you know what to do. 
be kind to yourself. Be kind. Nope, I always get this wrong. Be kind to one another. Be kind to you. I love you, and I'll see you the next time.